Hello, praise the name of our God and King. Happy, powerful resurrection weekend. Happy, powerful Passover weekend. Happy, powerful Easter weekend. For many people, yes, they prefer Easter. I prefer Passover and the resurrection weekend. But it doesn't matter what we prefer. The essence of, our, of this week or this weekend is the fact that you and I are going to enjoy the total, the fullest, the fullest of the, the love of God expressed in Christ's, Christ's sacrificial death at Calvary and his resurrection. I have spent before this, I have spent about 15 minutes talking about this and I realized that it wasn't recorded, so I have to start all over again. But hey, we are here, hallelujah. And I, 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 I thank God that you and I find ourselves in this. As we continue in the season, in our series of the peace of God, or what is peace, I want to assure you that there is never a greater time in the history of humanity that we can enjoy this peace that humanity is looking for, you and I are looking for, in the season that we find ourselves this Passover resurrection weekend. That is the, the power of God expressed in the fullest. Now that is a season where God gave the best that he has. For he loved that so much. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him will not perish. And it's, the Bible says that the eternal life in the eternal life is peace. Because he has said that if God has given us his son, then he's not going to hold anything back from us. And peace is one of the things that are evaded many. But there is peace in Christ. Oh, before Christ was born, Isaiah had already prophesied that he is the Prince of Peace. He is. He is the Prince of Peace. And Hebrew says, he's the King of Peace. <laughs> the King of Salem. Oh, hallelujah. And because of, of Easter, we can now understand that Christ had paid the price for us. Maybe all this why you didn't know. All this why you were thinking. But I want to assure you of something. No matter the, 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 season, the season that you find yourself in. This Easter period. This three days. From yesterday, Good Friday. Why did the world call it Good Friday? Or why do Christians call it Good Friday? Because it's the best Friday in the history of humanity. Is the day that Christ paid the price. He could have died on Monday, no. Tuesday, no. Wednesday, no. Thursday, no. Friday. I'm, I'm happier because I was born on Friday. So connect myself to this beautiful, beautiful, amazing grace. Hallelujah. Good Friday. Christ died. Christ died for you. And I know and I am confident of this fact. Because God has been good to us and he's given himself for us. Your peace is part of his accomplished work at Calvary for you. Last week, God said to me, barely 10 days ago, he says, if I, the cross is my greatest weapon against the enemy, my greatest weapon, my death, and resurrection is the greatest, it is my ultimate weapon, ultimate arsenal against the workings of darkness. Because by my cross, with the cross, my death and resurrection, I subdued Satan. I disarmed him. I took from him all, all that he took from Adam in the beginning. I took from him the keys of Hades. And I give it back to anyone who believes. And I tell you something. Peace is part of the package. The peace that you think it has eluded you all this while. Is part of the package of Christ's death and his resurrection. Oh, hallelujah. The king of Salem himself. If your Christian is in you. No situation should have the power to overwhelm you. But if it has. Or it, if it has. This is it. Tap into this peace. 
in the season, in this season that we find ourselves, tap into this peace. Because it passes all understanding. Tap into it. Tap into the mind and the love of God for you. Christ paid the price for all this. Because Isaiah 53 says it. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Anything that should dis- the enemy wants to use to dis- disturb your mind. And he says, there are, there are causes for anxieties. The past or childhood experiences. Your past or childhood experiences, I know that impact. But because the little <laughs> experience that I had in terms of abandonment and neglect from childhood had some profound impact on my life until Christ came in. And I can assure you of something. I'm one, I'm one of the happiest people on earth. Why? Why do I say that? Because I came to experience the reckless love of God for me. The ultimate sacrifice. The joy and the peace of God that passes all understanding. Oh, hallelujah. Because he has said in his word, he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Because he trusts in you. you. Trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For in Yah, the Lord, is everlasting strength. Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. He will keep you in perfect peace. Who? God. No matter your childhood experiences. And then there are other causes like your current situation. Current situation... Hey, I mean, even the richest man on earth is still experiencing some current issues. Who hasn't got issues? We all have issues. But when you trust in the peace of God, he says, I will keep you in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on me because what you trust. Trust is a complete lean on. It's like when you jump, you jump on your bed. Oh, okay, let me just not even use things that have been made my mind because the bed might break, your chair must break. I'm talking about a rock, a rock, a rock, or maybe a huge tree, a rock. And as you walk and you decide to take, you know, rest a while, that rock, that mountain, that hill, it is so, it, it supports the weight of your tiredness. Jesus is a rock of ages. <laughs> cleft for me yet. Cleft, it overshadows you. It hides. You can hide in him. In the midst of the storms, in the midst of the carnage, in the midst of current situation. Oh my goodness, current situations. Oh, don't go there. I have a long list of situations. But he has said to me, cast Throw all your cares upon me because I care. If God says he cares, then who am I to hold? Who am I to be anxious? You see, sometimes anxiety is, is solely because we have not left it. Or we have not trusted. Some people, it's like, you know, <laughs> somebody says that not trusting in God is like, uh, you know, casting, throwing something, um, and then throwing something away, and then you think about it. Oh my goodness! Oh my god! Ah, hi! Why did I? Oh, yeah. and you go and pick it up, and you carry it on your head. You throw it away in prayer, and then suddenly the enemy comes, and he begins to bother your mind about things. He begins to, oh, are you sure God can do this? Or oh, God can do that? And he said, ah, I'm not even sure. That you go back and you carry the weight. The enemy is a thief. He's a destroyer. He's come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. His, his, his agenda is to watch you destroy yourself, be anxious, threaten, no joy, no peace, because he delights in seeing, the, especially the children of God, miserable. Don't give him that joy. Don't give him. In the name of Jesus, don't give it to him. And also physical and mental health issues. Physical and mental health issues can cause somebody to be anxious. And that is what Jesus says. The Bible says, as that says, 
that the chastisement of our peace was upon him. No matter the trauma, the chastening of our peace, the torture in our minds for any reason, the demons that are telling you to do things, say things, worry about things, no matter the trauma, if, if it's sometimes bereavement has a way of causing us sleepless nights because the loss is incomprehensible. It's incomprehensible. You, you don't know how, 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 how am I going to cope without this precious person? Working in mental health for a few years, I tell you something. Many have been traumatized by the loss, the loss of parents especially, and then spouses. But hey, there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother or a sister or a spouse, and that friend is Jesus. He says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Those who have left us, those who are passed on, they've left us. But Jesus says, for me, trust me, I will never leave you or forsake you. And that should be enough to give you peace that passes all understanding. They don't want you to have peace because you've of the loss. God says, I'll give you peace. Because for if the person is a believer, it says, blessed are they who die in the Lord for the rest from their labors. The rest. And so don't worry about somebody who's resting from their labor. They finish their job and they are with God. Oh, I'll tell you something. I know. I feel pain. <laughs> I, I always say to people, I don't handle bereavement very well, but I'm learning to cope, to manage it, and, to, and also learn to cast it. Because I tell you something, when I love somebody, I love them so deep, losing them is unbearable. But God has given us his peace that passes under all understanding. Over 447 times in the Old Testament, God talks to his people about peace. And 94 times in the New Testament, my goodness, it's more than a dose of peace a day. The Old Testament alone fulfills the 630, 336, 35 or 36 years or whatever. And then we top it up with the rest. So there are days that we can take a double dose, double doses of the peace of God. Hallelujah. And then drugs and medication, drugs. So be careful. Don't depend. If there is any dependency, let it be Christ and not on drugs or medication. Drugs meaning abuse of hard, destructive drugs. And then medication also. There are some serious direct, they call it side effects. They are direct effects of the medications you have taken. Some medications really causes anxiety. And so don't be dependent on medication, even prescribed medication. Take them if you have to. But don't be dependent on them. Depend on the Christ, the God, whose you are and whom you serve. Because this weekend, he paid the price for every sickness in your body. And by his stripes, you are healed. Some of the uh, common um, triggers, they say caffeine, go easy and coffee and some strong tea. <laughs> it says messy environment. Let us keep our environment clean. So that we don't get too anxious. Self-neglect. Don't neglect yourself. Keep yourself good. Feel good about yourself. Love yourself. And I mean, dress up. Good hygiene and dress up. Make you, When you dress up, you feel happy. I'm telling you. Have a good shower. You dress up. And, and, and you, it's like loving yourself. Because you are all, the only thing that God has given. given. It's you you yourself so keep yourself good don't allow sl stress sleep also is important don't neglect sleep sleep if you can't sleep at night sleep in the day can't sleep in the day sleep at night but don't neglect it lack of finances also has a way of causing a lot of anxieties but you see let god give us give us the wisdom to manage it and if our expenses are much greater than our income. Trust in the Lord. He says, the cattle and the gold upon it, the cattle upon the thousand hills belong, belong to him, the gold and the silver also. Let's trust in God's ability to provide. 
our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ. Social connections. Now, social media has become the, the, one of the most dangerous places. If you are not looking for the right things, if you're not looking for the word of God to encourage you, if you're not looking for the good things in life, if you're looking at how much somebody is liking a friend and they're not liking yours, you'll be depressed. Listen, if you compare yourself to others, some have great following, others don't. <laughs> nah. Jesus, uh, the Bible was talking about some people that have been given what? Thousands to take care of, hundreds to take care of, tens, fifties. Maybe yours is only tens. How are you going to compare yourself with the ones that God is giving thousands to oversee? Don't focus on what God has asked you to do. If your message is for one person, one person, do you know the impact of one? Do you know the influence of one? One man died to save humanity. And that is how powerful the one person is. Maybe that person could be the future Benin or the future Billy Graham. Who knows? The future great man and apostle, a world changer, that one person. I'll tell you something. I have many testimonies of that one. Don't let me start. If God, your, the word God gave you impacted one life, that is enough. Don't compare. Social media can break you and make you anxious if you compare yourself to all those big names who have great followings. Don't. Pray that the, 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 the person that God has given you the message for will receive it and run with it. And that should be enough. Hallelujah. Amen. And then work environment. Oh, my goodness. Work environment is it's terrible. But you see, in Psalm 23, I'm going to round up this. Psalm 23. David says this. He sums it all up. He says, the Lord is my shepherd, so I shall not want. He is my shepherd. He's the one who watches over me, so I will never want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. It means he's taking you to a place to feed you. You think you don't have enough? Trust in God's ability to feed you. Uh, he leads you beside still waters. He says, still waters. You see, still waters. That is peace. God will lead you into peace if you trust him. Oh, hallelujah. And then he restores your soul. He will restore if even, no matter how bad childhood experiences or any experience have made you broken. Your current life. Or physical, mental health, whatever it is, drugs or medication, he will lead you into still waters. Hallelujah. And he will restore your soul. Leads you into the path of righteousness. He will lead you into the path of righteousness. The steps of the, the righteous are ordered by God. He will lead you if you trust in him for his great namesake. And then David says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. The presence of God is enough to give you peace. No matter the situation you find yourself in, the valley of the shadow of death, you can see death, you can see everything around you going off. Remember, the presence of God is with you. Those three Hebrew boys, they were in the fire, but they believed in the God who was able to deliver them. And he did. The fourth man came in there because they trusted in the God who was able to be with them, even in the fire. So as I says, even in the fire, I'll be with you. In the water, it will not drown you. God will not allow you to be drowned in the rivers. God will not allow the fire to, to destroy you. He'll take you out. His rod and his staff comforts you. Comfort with strength. That word comfort there, two words, kum and forte in Latin, with strength. God will come alongside you with strength and he will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Hallelujah. And anoint your head with oil. Oh, hallelujah, for great exploits. And your cup will run over. I can assure you. And David finally said, surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord 
forever. Dwell. As long as you dwell in the house of the Lord forever, his goodness and his mercies will follow you. Remember, his presence never leaves us or forsakes us. I love you guys. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your path. Acknowledge God this Easter. Happy resurrection. Happy Passover weekend. Christ died for you. He loves you. And that should be enough to give you peace. So I say shalom, shalom, shalom. Love you guys. See you again. Bye for now. Uh.